Welcome back to Bioclass Bites. In this video, we are going to talk about the terrestrial biomes, tundra, and taiga. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. In our previous episode, we talked about the desert. Uh, in this video, we will focus on tundra and taiga. The word tundra is derived from the Russian word tundra or, and Lapish word tundar, which means uplands or elevated wasteland. This refers to areas where the subsoil is permanently frozen and we call that permafrost, okay? So if you still remember in our previous video on desert, we have a polar desert and that is mostly made up of uh, snow. So the main, uh, main form of precipitation in polar deserts are uh, snow, okay? However, for tundra, there's still uh, soil okay, beneath the snow, but the, the soil is permanently frozen and we call that permafrost so the arctic tundra is um, a vast area of stark or severe landscape which is frozen for much of the year so again if you still remember in our previous video we mentioned that the antarctic okay is the world's largest polar desert and that's found in the south pole arctic tundra or arctic is found in the north pole so it's mostly made up of tundra okay so, tundra is an area where the tree growth is hindered by low temperatures, okay, below freezing temperatures, and very short growing seasons. This map, again, no, shows us where we can find uh, tundra. So, here, it's mostly found in the Arctic, in the North Pole. Okay? So, here, in these regions, okay, Northern Russia, then we have here in uh, Northern uh, America, okay? a little bit in Greenland as well but here this is mostly polar desert so this is mostly uh, polar ice so below that we have soil okay? we have mountains we have soil but a permanently frozen soil we call it permafrost so this is an image of uh, the arctic permafrost so as you can see there's land there's mountain formation there's soil beneath but it's permanently frozen hence permafrost now, to learn more about tundras, I recommend that you watch this video from National Geographic entitled, What are Tundras? I will provide the link in the description below. In tundra, the temperature is very cold and very harsh, okay, for most of time of the year, almost nine months. That's why many animals do not live there um, all year long. So, they mostly hibernate or they mostly migrate when there's extreme cold temperature or extreme cold season. Insects are plenty during the summer. Plants, on the other hand, are generally small. They grow only in the short summers because, again, no, it's mostly very cold for nine months in a year. So they just they, the plants there are mostly uh, are, are small in terms of height because they only have almost you know three months out of a year to grow. They can easily grow seeds, which can survive until the following summer. So this is from Ask a Biologist. Uh, from Arizona State University, you can visit that. I'll provide the link in the description below. They say that tundra is a flat and cold with low plants like grass and moss. We've only we've said that before. They only grow during the short summer, that only those three months out of a year. So there's a permanently frozen soil, okay, all year round. Therefore, trees cannot penetrate it to anchor their roots. So it's quite difficult for trees to grow in tundra because of the permafrost so only grasses uh, only uh, low-lying uh, plants uh, like grasses can grow during those three months of summer many bird, birds visit the tundra in the summer but most escape to winter by migration to a warmer regions okay mice and other small animals also stay stay active uh, during the winter through their tunnels that they have created under the snow so this one is another image okay, of uh, tundra. So from being among the coldest and driest uh, places on earth, tundra is important to planet, plant and animal life. Okay? So in, during winter, the average temperature is below 0 degrees with very strong winds and permanent darkness. Very little precipitation and sunlight even during summer times. Okay? However, that's the time when the grasses um, uh, are become more uh, plenty. So this is home, tundra is home to seasonal visitors uh, during summer. Here are 
three types of tundra. So here we can find the Antarctic um, tundra found in the Antarctic Peninsula in some of the islands in the South Pole. And then we have here the Alpine tundra found in the mountains. And then we have here the Arctic tundra found in the northernmost parts of North America and Asia. So, even if they are quite different in terms of their um, appearance, okay, what's common about them is this. They all have cold, dry weather. Okay? They all of them have cold, dry weather. And, and also the type of plants that can grow are almost the same in this tundra. That's why if you still remember on our introduction video, what the, uh, the top three uh, factors to consider in describing and classifying biomes would be number one climate followed by flora so that's those are the plants and fauna those are the animals that can live in that biome so examples of fauna okay, animals that can live in tundra you can find here the caribou grizzly bears yak here um, musk oxen found in alaska and then also some of these um, arctic hares then we can also find Arctic fox. Okay, so they have white winter, a white winter coat, or they have white coat during winter, and then they have a darker summer coat during summer. Then you can also find um, Pacific golden plover, one of the birds in Alaskan tundra, and this crab eater seal, which lives on the coast of the Antarctic Peninsula. Plants, well, we have here mosses, mostly mosses, um, uh, primro Paris primrose, then um, plants are, yeah, we've mentioned this, because of the permafrost of permanently frozen soil, um, plants here are shorter and they need little to no soil, such as this. Uh, this one is actually a lichen, a symbiotic relationship between uh, fungus and algae, so they, are, they mostly grow here on tree barks, they do not need extensive root or water transportation system. So lichens. In summary, so tundra is found here in this part of the map, part of the globe, covers the expansive area of the Arctic, almost 20% of the Earth's land surface. So we've had, uh, we also have alpine tundra on the high, mo high mountain tops. Then we have the Arctic uh, tundra and the Antarctic tundra. In terms of precipitation, it averages from 20 to 60 annually. So that's still, um, that's still higher compared to 30 centimeters in deserts, specifically in polar deserts. Some may even exceed 100 centimeters in alpine tundra. Winters are cold. We've said that almost nine months out of a year. And then the sum, so they could reach up to below negative uh, 30 degrees Celsius. Even if even the summer temperatures are still cold in less than 10 degrees Celsius. So the vegetation is mostly herbaceous, very short plants, very, very low-lying plants, such as mosses, grubs, grasses, and forbs, okay? And dwarf shrubs and trees and lichens. The permanently frozen soil, called perm permafrost, restricts the growth of plant roots. In terms of animals, mostly grazing animals, such as musk oxen, caribou, and re reindeer. And they are migratory. So when, when the temperature is very low, when it's winter already, they migrate to warmer climate. Predators would include bears, wolves, and foxes. In terms of human impact, um, tundra is sparsely settled, so very few humans live here, but they are slowly becoming a significant sources of mineral and oil, and they're being extracted in the recent years. So this one is uh, a tundra from um, Norway in autumn. The next terrestrial biome is taiga. So taiga is known as the world's largest biome. It has harsh continental climate with very large temperature range between summer and winter. So this map shows us where we can find taiga. So it's here, okay, um, northern part of Asia. So it's quite large, you know, northern part of America, very, very large um, regions. Um, so it's generally referred to in North America as boreal forest or snow po forest and it is characterized by this type of vegetation, this type of flora, coniferous forests. 
consisting of pines, spruces, and larches. Still from Ask a Biologist from Arizona State University, linked in the description below, they say again no, that taiga is the largest biome in the world. It's mostly made up of conical shape, evergreen needle-like uh, trees with needle-like leaves, such as these conifers. Okay? Um, they are called conifers because their seeds are clumped into cones. Okay? We've discussed this in our lesson on um, uh, sexual reproduction of plants. Taiga has long cold winters when most uh, mammals migrate, uh, hibernate, and most birds migrate. Okay? So examples of those animals will be shown later. So these are examples of forest, deciduous uh, trees, and spruces. Okay, these are examples of trees that can grow in taiga or boreal forests. So you can watch this video from Biomes of the World, Taiga or Boreal Forest. You can find the link in the description below. The taiga is home to large herbivorous mammals and smaller rodents. So one important adaptation for those animals would be the ability to survive in harsh climate. So for example, for large mammals such as bears, they eat during the summer. So they, they, they gain weight during summer so that during winter they can go into hibernation or a very inactive state during winter. So that's why they need to have a lot of uh, body mass and body fat during summer and then they hibernate during winter. Other animals have adapted by having very thick layers of fur or feathers to insulate them or protect them from extreme cold. So this is another um, image or photo of a taiga okay, or boreal forest. So this is found on top of the Rocky and Sierra Nevada mountains. So this again, a taiga is mostly dominated by coniferous forests. Okay, so they have their seeds are, are, are formed into cones or found in cones. Okay. So these are the um, animals that can be found in taiga, grizzly bear, osprey, wolverine, and weasels. Um, some animals such as this caribou can also live uh, uh, in taiga, but they have to migrate during a uh, cold winter or taiga winter to warmer, um, warmer regions. We can have garter snakes. Okay, they also... Um, spend their winters in dens. Um, we have wood frogs who can partially freeze during winter. Um, what else? Uh, then you can find more and more deciduous trees um, in, in boreal forest or in taiga as well. So to sum it up, um, taiga or also called uh, coniferous forest or boreal forest is the largest biome um, on earth. Can, so you can see it here. The annual precipitation is uh, higher than tundra from 30 to 70, 70 centimeters annually. Droughts are also common. Okay? Temperature, the winters are usually cold. Summers can be hot. Okay? Coniferous forests in Siberia can have a, a temperature of negative 50 degrees in winter and over 20 degrees during summer. So plants are mostly cone-bearing plants. Coniferous uh, trees such as pine, spur, fir, hemlock. Okay, uh, what else? Animals are usually they can either migrate during uh, summer or they can hibernate during winter. Okay, so human impact they have not been heavily settled by human populations, although they are being logged. Okay, they are the trees are being cut down at an alarming rate, and the old growth stands of these trees may soon disappear. So this one is a coniferous forest in Norway. That ends our video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Till next time, goodbye.